The Department of Physics and Material Science at City University of Hong Kong has grown considerably over the last four years. Now we have 31 faculties, 300 undergraduate students over two majors, and about 120 graduate students. September 2012 really marks a new beginning for the department. It was at a time when the higher education in Hong Kong transformed from a three-year curriculum to a four-year program. We also began a collaboration with the new programs within the university, namely the nuclear engineering program and lately the School of Veterinary Medicine. Eleven faculties have joined the department since. The department is entering a new stage of transformation. As a start, we began to make changes in our curriculum. This is also in response to recommendations from the Departmental Advisory Board, the external academic advisors, as well as accreditation agencies such as Hong Kong Institute of Engineers. We're seeing five new research areas are forming, light and matter, energy storage materials, biomedical physics, computer modeling and theory, and advanced characterizations. These will really help to foster collaborations amongst ourselves and also with other departments across the university. Our research traditionally involves two components, uh, chemical synthesis of nanomaterials and uh, optical characterization, mostly using spectroscopy. So we explore new light emitting nanomaterials such as carbon dots and perovskites. At the same time, we still work on our more traditional materials like uh, infrared emitting quantum dots and we try to make them ready for use in photodetectors in collaboration with electronic engineers. Our light emitting nanomaterials are naturally very useful and very attractive materials for light emitting devices and displays. And these are two areas of applications which are now increasingly exploring and we offer our expertise to industrial partners in China and in South Korea. Nowadays, nanomaterials are synthesized due to their unique properties, for example, mechanical property, electrical property, thermal property, and the magnetic properties. And these unique properties make nanomaterials for the great uh, candidate uh, for future biomedical applications. My research is interested at whether those materials, when they enter the human body, what will happen? For example, whether they are biocompatible, whether they are toxic, whether they would destroy the structure and dynamics of cell membrane. Thermoelectric materials are those materials that convert the heat into electricity. And here we are mainly focused on how to enhance the efficiency of the materials in terms of by doping. By doping, you can change the different valence electrons and the band gap. That influences a lot in thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, and then the SIBA coefficient that you really need to understand how this material performs. We are collaborating with a local bus company and we are going to install these generators at the exhaust pipe of the bus. These waste heat, even pumping more heat in, on the road. So we are trying to harvest some part, at least 10 percentage, to convert it to usable electricity. So we expect to get at least 100 watt so that we can light up the bulbs inside the bus. Flexible and transparent solar cells are very important because we can use them to harvest solar energy everywhere. In my group for the past several years, we have developed an enhanced synthesis technique to achieve low cost, high quality, high performance, semiconducting nanowires, mostly gallium arsenide, which are also mechanical elastic on amorphous substrate. We can use those nanowire to print on any substrate. By controlling the printing speed and pressure, we can achieve a very high quality of the gallium arsenide nanowire films for any device fabrications, for example on plastic and on transparent glasses. With that, by combining very simple asymmetric aluminum and gold metal electro with different work function, we can assemble socky solar cell on glasses and flexible plastic and then those devices exhibit impressive performance up to a couple percent of the energy conversion efficiencies. So with that, obviously we believe there's still plenty of room for the further improvement. With the uh, rapid development of portable electronics, it's getting more and more important to power them with the uh, 
uh, next generation energy storage technologies. We have a battery which is quite flexible and highly safe. Even the unpacked battery can be impact resistant. It, it will never explode. Even you put it on fire, it can still work. We adopt a kind of new polymer hydrogel, dual cross-linked polymer hydrogel as electrolyte. And the supercapacitor developed by uh, this electrolyte can be even self healable Even after 20 times cutting and, and healing processes, uh, the electrochemical performance of the device can be 100% kept. The key strength of the Department of Physics and Material Science is really our excellent research programs. We work on both basic science and applied research. In 2014 research assessment exercise, a review of research achievements for all Hong Kong universities in, in the last six years, we rank number one in material science and the number two in physics. The department is also uh, very successful in attracting top quality graduate students. In last year's admission of a Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme, we attracted eight Hong Kong PhD fellows out of the possible 200 awards. It just provides a great platform to develop your skills as a young scientist. Um, aside from the great research facilities we have here, I think we have a lot of people with different backgrounds, which is just a, yeah, great uh, when, you, when you work in such an interdisciplinary field as nanotechnology. And apart from this professional diversity, I also think we have a great cultural diversity here, which is just a great experience altogether. Down the road, the Department of Physics and Material Science at uh, City University of Hong Kong uh, aspires to become a leading institution in applied physics and material science in Asia-Pacific region. That is a goal we set four years ago. We are not quite there yet, but we have made a giant step toward that goal.